Hey, yo, what's going on, guys? This Mega Reed here, and welcome to a rather different type of video. Uh, usually, by the time I would put this video out, or a video out in, in general around this time, it would obviously be like a Christmas special. Usually, it would be something like Minecraft or something. I would just play around, right? <laughs> Blow up stuff, you know, do the typical stupid stuff that I, <laughs> I do in around holiday time. And of course, I'd have my screen my my face cam and I'd have I'll be all Christmas hol holiday up you know, but since of course for those who don't know my PlayStation's kind of been dying as we speak and it desperately needs to be replaced but unfortunately can't do that right now because obviously you know money's tight right now for us and for myself in particular but today I wanted to put out a different type of holiday special video, and this one I'm titling it Holiday Predictions. And um, obviously I'm trying out uh, my new screen recorder on my Chromebook here, so hopefully it works. If it doesn't, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna be happy about that. But obviously, of course, we have my wallpaper in the background. Ignore that. Anyway, so uh, we're gonna open up a new tab real quick. And we're gonna get started. So, uh, first prediction that I that I want to get out, out of the way is we're gonna start off with our good friends over at Lego. So let's go there right now. And uh, one set in particular from Lego that I've wanted for quite some time now is let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Let's see if I can find it. Hold on. Hopefully it pops up. There it is. This guy right here. So let me see if I can blow this up. There we go. So here it is. The Lamborghini Scion FPK 37. This set is one that I've wanted ever since it got revealed to us last year, I want to say, by Lego. And um, for those who don't know, I, I, I've been collecting, let alone playing with Lego for quite some time now, and um, this is probably one of the coolest sets I've seen the company put out in recent years, is this Lamborghini Scion. Now, um, one thing that I, one thing I love about this set, let alone these giants, $300, you can see the price tag right there, $380 for this thing, uh, and I believe this thing is, uh, the weight of it, I think is like, isn't it like a... Let me see. Does it have the weights somewhere? Because I know it's a heavy set. But, yeah, this thing is amazing. Uh, let me go back to the screenshots real quick of this thing. So, again, $380 for this set. Let's blow it up a bit so that way we can actually see it. Hold on. Full screen. Yeah, let's blow it up. So that way you guys can see this thing. Absolutely beautiful Lego models. You guys can see. This is one of the more recent Lamborghini models. I believe this set is based off of a show model... Uh, from a car show, I believe, or some sort of showcase of this vehicle um, when it was, you know, still in the prototype stage sort of deal, right? And it's and it's based off of that particular design. And I could definitely tell that right away because of the rims. And by the way, these rims are special molds for this set. And again, it looks really, really nice. Again, going to the box, the box is just... It, 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 let me tell you, these LEGO supercars, they really make you feel like a million bucks when you buy these sort of sets. Because, as you guys can see, the boxes, obviously the top is based off of the front um, hood of the vehicle, right? With the big old Lamborghini logo right there. And then the top of the box is based off of the back, the rear end of the vehicle, with the big old Lamborghini, you can kind of see if I can zoom in on that. So you can see the Lamborghini logo just barely hiding behind there. And then, of course, we get another front view of the vehicle. Again, absolutely stunning looking thing. Um, and this, and again, this is not their first of these LEGO supercars. As they've released, I believe it was in 2016, they released the Porsche 911 GT3 RS. I wanted that set so darn bad holiday of that year, but I couldn't get it because, again, 
but it was too expensive at the time. And same with, uh, what was that? I believe it was the 2018 uh, Lamborghini Chiron, which we're going to look at that in a second after we're done here. But still, really, really, really cool looking. And also at the top, sort of view of this thing. I, again, just, oh, I just love this thing. So, and, and that's not even talking about the gimmicks of this car. Because this car has a full gear shift built into this thing. And I believe there's a hidden button somewhere. You push down on the car and the gullwing doors flip upwards, which I think is absolutely amazing. And it actually has, you guys can kind of see detailed seats in there with Lamborghini logos on them and everything. And on the back, just beautiful detailing for the rear lights and the sort of rear design of the vehicle. Obviously, if I get this set, I'm definitely going to do like a full on like like full review of this set because, oh my god, this thing is amazing. And of course, we get some more product shots. We get some more product shots of the rear. And it also has the brake pads detailed in as well, which I think is pretty nice. And I like how they use these rubber tube pieces to sort of uh, give that streamlined look that Lamborghinis have been known for, right? Because these things are like race cars, right? They're super fast right but of course we have sort of the little what do you call that is, is that the Italian flag yeah sort of color design going on there on both sides of the rear end and of course here we can see the dashboard right with the uh, steering wheel and I believe that's a sticker right there could be a print I'm thinking it's a sticker but and then I believe somewhere in here is where the clutch system not clutch system the um yeah, the, the, the gear shift. Yeah, that's where that is. Somewhere in here, there's a paddle you push, and it changes the gears. It's absolutely fantastic gimmick. And I believe it also has a gear differential in this. And it's four-wheel drive as well, just like the real vehicle, which I think is fantastic. And, of course, on the inside, see, there is the actual gear shift right there. But uh, uh, but uh, this uh, gear shift right here, I don't think actually does anything. I know it's like a... Pa I think it's a paddle or something in the... Uh, dashboard that does it. You push it and then it like there's gears on the inside that will push and click right to activate the, the different gears and I believe it has a total of eight different gears it can go into I believe. Could be wrong about that. Oh and of course right here we have the V12 engine which sadly on the actual brick built model once it's all built up is very difficult to see but there is like 12 brick built pistons uh, well Technic pistons on the inside that will move around as you push the car, which I think is pretty cool. And then here's what the what the wheel assembly looks like. Has some nice springs on it. And from what I can tell, the suspension is actually very nice on this thing, just like the real vehicle. And here's a look at the gearbox, and I believe it's in these sort of areas where my cursor is, is where the gear shift uh, happens. And like I said, it can shift between, I believe, eight different gears. Could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it has eight different gears. Because this one will shift gears, right? And then this one will also shift as well. So that's pretty cool. And then right here we have a better look at the wheel, which does look very nice. Then, of course, you have the front, which has some luggage, and I believe there's, like, a special code that you can use for something. I don't know what that's for, but, of course, they, of course, censored that out for the product shots. But, of course, then we have the back of the box, which has a really nice shot of the actual set there. Of course, we have some more sort of product shots going on here. And I believe this one, yeah, this is the inside of the box. And the inside of the box is awesome, as you guys can see. You can, it, Even though the lid kind of covers it up, there's eight little boxes in here. And each box correlates to a different stage in the building process of the set. So, like, this one could be one, this one would be two, three, four, five, six. You get the idea. And what's nice is that each one is designed to look like the rear vents on the actual Lamborghini Scion itself, which I think is awesome. And then, of course, we get some more handsome product shots of the vehicle. Oh, here we get a nice uh, look at the engine block in the back, which is very nice with, of course, the V12 engine back there, which is awesome. Uh, of course, we get a nice rear view of the vehicle. 
got some more little product product shots, of course. There you can kind of get a better idea of what the V12 engine looks like when it doesn't have all that other junk covering it up. And then, of course, we have a nice little luggage shot right there. Because, again, this car doesn't really have much room for luggage, as you're not really using this as a family car. You're using this as, like, a show car or a race car type thing, right? So... Very, very nice set. Now, to quickly move on to the Bugatti, which is another set I would love to get, because I believe the Porsche 911, that one's been retired, but this one I know is still in production. There it is. The Bugatti Chiron. Yeah, this is $350, and this thing is just fantastic. Let's blow this thing up. So, this is obviously based off of the very popular, at least for its time, uh, Bugatti Chiron. Um, which, no, it's not Chiron, it's pronounced Chiron. I, I, I looked it up, <laughs> you know, as you do. But, yeah, this thing is really, really nice. Oh, and something else I forgot to mention about the uh, Lamborghini Scion is that, the, uh, is that the steering wheel actually works. You twist the steering wheel and the wheels will turn, which I think is pretty cool, too. And this one does it as well, the Bugatti. But... Yeah, very, very nice model. Again, uh, not, it's not like the uh, Lamborghini right off the bat, because it's not like detailed to look like the car on the box. It, does, it just shows shots of the vehicle, but still really, really nice. And, of course, the wheels are special molds for this set. Of course, we do have the Bugatti little logos in there. The Bugatti logos on the brake pads, which I think is fantastic. Of course, on the back, you have the big old Chiron logo right there. And the sort of rear tail light and the little tail spoiler. Which, I believe you actually use a key, a brick-built key, to open that up, which I think is pretty cool. Of course, right here, you get a sort of design of the sort of brake pad design and the suspension. Those look quite nice. Of course, we do get a nice detail. Look at the seats, which I believe these are real leather seats uh, in the actual supercar itself. And then, of course, you get this real nice engine here. I believe this is, does it say, yeah, it's a, uh, does it say W or V? Hold on, let me get a zoom in on that. W16, it says. I believe what they meant is V16 engine or W16 engine. Okay. So, I, so that I guess that, you know, <laughs> judging by the last engine we looked at with the Lamborghini that said V12, I'm assuming this one has 16 pistons in it. Oh, boy, that's going to be fun to assemble. <laughs> but, of course, we do have some more product shots. Of course, the back of the car on the back of the box. And, of course, the inside has the rims, uh, not the rims, the special molded uh, wheel. Yeah, the hubcaps, right? And then, of course, we have the um, the different boxes that are segregated to, again, a different stage in the building process. And it's designed to look like uh, the left side, no, not the left side, the right side of the front of the vehicle, which I think is fantastic. Of course, again, another uh, design of that 16-piston engine. That's going to be fun to assemble. I mean, look at all this craziness. Look at all this craziness you got to put together to make this thing work. Good lordy. And then, of course, we have some more details. And as you can see, there's that brick-built key I was talking about. You slide that inside, and I believe it connects somewhere inside, and that's what makes the rear um, stabilizer slash uh, spoiler come up, just like on the real vehicle, which is great. Of course, you get some more cool product shots here. Let's skip ahead a little bit. There's the luggage right there. Very tiny piece of luggage that fits right in the front of the car. And it's so tiny. Like, there's a barely any room for the lid to open. And, of course, you get another code in there, which, again, of course, is blurred out, um, obviously. Cause, eh, but, anyway. Then, of course, we get some nice um, sort of, what do you call it, schematics. And, apparently, this is in um, minifigure scale, this vehicle. So, that's kind of interesting. And as you can see, there's a minifigure next to this behemoth of a vehicle. Good lord. But, anyway, those are the sets. That That's the Lego side of things, of stuff that I want for Christmas this year. Also, uh, let's move on as well to... Uh, you know what? Let's go into... Uh, let's go visit our good friends over at Target. Let's go visit them, as there is some stuff I want from them as well. First and foremost, I definitely want this particular figure. Do they have it in store yet? No, I guess we're going to have to visit Amazon for that one. So let me open up Amazon on another page here. 
So let's see if I can find the other thing that I want to get for uh, holidays this year. Uh, something I would love to get. Hold on, I've got to quickly jog my memory of it. Uh, and now I actually saw this uh, just randomly browsing um, the website here, but they, but our good friends over at Wow We. Uh, which, by the way, they for those who don't know who we are, they're a company that does various robotic products. They're not as active as they used to be, but they were pretty popular back in the day with like Robo Sapien, Robo Raptor, all that cool stuff. But nowadays they do stuff like this, like this recent um, product they released called the Hydra Quad. Now I'm not I'm not too big into quadcopters, let alone uh, more as what what people would call toy grade RC quadcopters. But this one is definitely interesting, as this one apparently can do three different modes. Apparently, so it has like a flight mode, like an air mode, then it has a land mode, and it also has a water mode. Or something like that, so it can basically fly in the air, travel on the ground, and 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 move through water. Very very interested to get this product. Of course, fifty dollars. I think it's a bit much, but still, it's definitely an interesting design. And I haven't seen a quadcopter like this in quite some time. I know that there's. I know that. Uh, there's obviously quadcopters that are designed to go underwater. I know that those exist. I believe there was, um, oh god, I forget the name of the, I believe it was WL Toys, I think, made a water-based quadcopter. Uh, I forget what it was called, and it's really, it's annoying me that I can't remember the name of the quadcopter, but, um, since it has been some time since I looked into RC stuff, let alone quadcopters, but this definitely looks interesting. Let's see if I can find some more product shots of it, because I know they have a box shot. There we go. So there is the box of the thing. As you can see, it has the 3-in-1 air, water, ground modes. And then, of course, on the back, it shows, like, oh, it can it's waterproof, you know, it can fly, so you travel on the ground and travel through water. This is very interesting, as, um, honestly, the RC quadcopter, let alone just RC um, hobby, has been kind of bland in recent years. And this is... And, and I'm surprised that this product's come out at all, as RC's pretty much dead these days, but... I'm surprised this has come out. Like I said, I would love to get this. Again, it's a little... I th I think I feel it's a little overpriced at $50. But you know what? It is what it is. So, um, we're going to move on from Target. And we're going to go to Amazon. So, Amazon, we're going to go here. And actually, it's perfect that we started on the Beyblade list. As there are some stuff in here that I wanted to get. Get. Actually, real quick, I completely forgot. Off target. Hold on. Let me go back to. No. Target. There we go. Target. Thank you. So, we want to search up. Let's see. Um, what was it? Oh, yeah. That's right. As there was a Beyblade set that I believe is exclusive to Target, actually. Uh, and there's some other things here I want to look at as well. So, first things first, you know, we're just going to start off with the stadium over here. This is the Surge Speedstorm Motor Strike Battle Set. This is one I've been having my eyes on for a while now. I'm not going to get too much into the details of this set, but essentially the whole gimmick uh, of this set is, of course, the Beyblades themselves, Evolucious, um, and bringer here on the left, and Evo and Evo Hyperion, uh, Blaze Flame Ringer, sorry, Flame Bringer over here, also known in Japan as Hyperion Burn and Lucifer the End, and their whole in the whole gimmick of the stadium and the Beyblades themselves, which sadly has been gutted from this release, as typical for Hasbro, is that these would have what was called the Limit Break system, which essentially allowed the Beyblades to activate different gimmicks upon taking enough damage during battle, it would activate 
or, or you know, because you know how Beyblade Burst works, works right? <laughs> Where you have the um, the disc, right, that over time during battle will slide a little bit depending on how aggressive the tops are battling each other. Essentially, yeah, every time it clicks, right, it gets closer to doing the limit break, and essentially it would just activate a crazy gimmick. In this case, for Lucifer the End, or Evil Lucius Endbringer, as Hasbro calls it, the gimmick would be that, of course, the little... Uh, plates here would shift and it would become this free spinning um, and, 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 the, and the different layers would become free spinning so the top part would become free spinning the middle part would become free spinning and the bottom part would become free spinning and a little bit of like this pink plastic would be revealed to sort of confirm that the limit break's been activated but of course on this version that of course, that gimmick has been gutted, and also this bay would also have a rubber burst stopper on the inside of the chip, and of course it would also have metal on it as well, which all of those gimmicks all gutted from this release. So, quite a shame. Oh, and also it had the driver, uh, the drift driver, and it had the um, Ku disc, or Ko disc, however you want to pronounce it. That's been gutted from this release as well. And um, the drift driver, its gimmick, which essentially allowed the Beyblade to drift around in the stadium, that also has been gutted, which really sucks. And then for Evil Hyperion Flamebringer, also known as uh, Hyperion Burn, his whole gimmick during his limit break would be that when he gets clicked twice, the little protrusions on the four sides would come out, thus making it more aggressive. However, uh, on the Japanese release, the teeth aren't all that great, so of course this will cause it to burst, which sucks. But, uh, of course on this release, that of course that gimmick has been gutted. It also had the, um, the Cho disc, or, yeah, the Cho disc, which also has been gutted from this release, and uh, it would also have the Extend Plus um, X, no, yeah, X uh, driver, which surprisingly has actually stayed with this release, including the actual, ex the actual uh, X chip that would go on the driver. Uh, that actually that actually stayed with this release. Sorry, shaking the camera around a little bit here, but um, yeah, definitely really want this release for that, but of course, um, the other gimmicks this bay had is that it also had a metal chip on in the middle, and the uh, chip itself, like the actual plastic piece, would have metal on it, but of course that gimmick has also been gutted. That really sucks. But anyway, the, mo the main reason you're getting this is not so much for the Beyblades as it is the actual stadium, as the stadium does have a motorized gimmick in it. This is a first for Hasbro. Um, is you push this little button right here, I believe it takes AA batteries, and this little plate in the middle will spin, and thus it will, you know, make the Beyblades go all crazy, it will boost them up, right, like it will increase their spins, so that way they can battle for a little longer type deal. It's, it's interesting, it's interesting to say the least. So definitely want to get this set, and again, it's on obviously, and it's on sale. That's cool. But anyway, so that's one set I definitely want to get for Christmas this year for sure, as that has been one I have had my eyes on for quite some time now. Something else I want to get, of course, is this set. This is the Speedstorm Dragonfire Faceoff set. Um, now, what's funny is that in Canada, this was exclusive to Toys R Us. Funny enough, because they still have Toys R Us over there, but. Thankfully, this uh, this two pack has come stateside, and now it's exclusive to Target. So that's fun. And uh, of course, in this set, you get variant Dragon. In this case, Dragon uh, Two, no, Dragon Three, um, from Tempest Dragon. And of course, we get uh, from the Tempest Dragon release. Sorry. And then we get uh, what is this? This is uh, Mirage. Yeah, Mirage. Diabolos. Uh, this is using the left Diabolos chip, obviously, from Abyss Diabolos, or Devilos. And uh, I like the Abyss, uh, not, not Abyss, sorry, the 
<laughs> the Mirage ring on this release, as it is a very nice color. Sadly, they didn't paint the eyes on the dragon heads, but, you know, that's typical of Hasbro, you know? Something that is kind of interesting about this release as well is that you actually get the 11 disc from Zia Achilles, but it's painted this time. And uh, the advertisement calls this a Flame Forge disc. So that's really nice. And I believe in another set, they also did uh, a painted disc, which I'm glad to see. I'm glad to see that Hasbro is finally acknowledging the fact they haven't been doing painted discs in their in their adaptation of the Takara Tomy products, right? So that's really cool to see. And of course, you do have some shots of the box. Of course, you got the back of the box, all that good stuff. You get a couple launchers with this set. It's a nice little gift thing. It's not much, but it's definitely nice, and I would love to get this set. And again, it's $26. I think that's a bit overpriced, but hey, <laughs> I think it works there. And I believe, yeah, there's one last set I definitely want to get, and it's this one. The Surge Speedstorm Slayer Showdown. Now, this set sort of came out uh, randomly um, as, I believe, the Zanky Beyblade channel. Shout out to that guy as uh, love his stuff, but he actually uh, revealed this set because uh, he went to Toys R Us. I believe it was a bay hunting video he was doing, but uh, anyway, he revealed this set there as, of course, Hasbro didn't bother to do like any... Didn't bother to give a... Didn't bother to tell us that, hey, there's a capstone coming out for Storage Speedstorm uh, system, but... I definitely like this set, because uh, you get a brand new stadium with this, which I do quite like. Uh, you do get a couple launchers, and you get six whole Beyblades here. In this case, you get a uh, Brave Satan, or a Brave Satum. You also get Death slash uh, Demise uh, Dullahan. You get Mirage Longinus. Uh, which I think is quite cool. You also get Spear Helios. That's the first version of Helios. You also get... Um, what is this? Abyss Fafnir. And lastly, you get Tempest slash Triumph Diabolos. I don't know why they have them flipped upside down in the product shot. Great job, Hasbro. But anyway, really do like the box for this. As it's just, oh, there's so much going on here. And of course, you do get the Flame Forge disc. In this case, it's just a red painted version of 5, which I do quite like. And then, of course, back of the box, you get some stuff for that. So, see, Spear. Oh, did I say Helios? I meant Hyperion. I'm sorry. <laughs> Small brain moment. Abyss Fafnir. See, Triumph Diabolos. Brave Satan. Demise, Dullahan, Death, Dullahan, Mirage, Luminor, Longinus, you know. Um, and uh, the only thing I don't like about this set, funny enough, is some of the colors in this set. It's more specifically, the Brave Satan uh, recolor that they did. Oh my god, it's horrible. I hate that recolor. But other than that, that's really about it for this set. Oh, and also something else I don't like is that they false advertised uh, the Tempest uh, ring as they have it. They have it molded uh, in the product shots in its um, what is it? In its attack mode, in its awakened mode, but on the actual toy version, it's in its normal mode, just like it was on the original Triumph release. Real nice clickbait there, Hasbro. But anyway, that's going to be about it for that. I think that's about it for the Target stuff. Oh, yeah, and also, um, let me see, is there anything else on Target that I missed? No, I think that's about it. Yeah, I think that's about it for Target. So now we can safely <laughs> move on to Amazon. So, Amazon, there's some stuff here I definitely want to get. And first and foremost, what I want to get is, of course, is a car version of Rage Longinus. Definitely want to get this guy for sure. I'm not going to go too deep into it, as uh, if you've seen my Raid Luanor review, you'll kind of get an idea of what this release is like. It's very similar, but obviously has some changes to it. But, yeah, that's definitely what I want to get uh, for sure. Uh, next up is this set right here, the Overdrive SP Starter Set. Let me actually get a good look at this thing. Uh, way overpriced at $94. Good lordy. Uh, more than likely, probably have to go on eBay to find this thing. But, um... 
basically in this set you get all kinds of cool bays in this. Uh, the main reason you're really getting this set is for Dangerous Belial and uh, Prominence Phoenix, which I love these two bays right here. As uh, Prominence Phoenix is the grand return of Phoenix. And uh, something else I like about it is that it has two modes. You have normal mode and you also have heavy mode. Uh, because just like the previous Phoenix, the armor does come off um, on this release. And the heavy mode basically makes it have stronger attacks to it. It comes with um, it comes with some nice parts as well. You get, uh, what do you get with this thing? You get, uh, let's see. Tapered, yeah, Tapered and Metal Universe with this release, which is pretty cool. And for Dangerous Belial, I do quite like this one, as he's part of the Overdrive layer system, alongside Ultimate Valkyrie and Greatest Raphael. And essentially, he has a Burst Lock on him, he has Rubber on his design now, and his driver is called All Might. And essentially, that has a gimmick where if you launch it hard, not only will the Burst Lock unlock, as you can kind of see right there, there's the little Burst Lock at the top, that little white thing you see on the head sort of, of Belial. Um, it will, when you launch it hard, the driver All Might will change modes from a uh, semi-aggressive tip to a straight-up flat tip, and definitely want to get this one for sure. Of course, you do get a special launcher with this release. I believe it is a customized LR launcher design, which I think is pretty cool. And you also get with this release, you get Brave uh, Perseus. Now, Perseus is interesting because this was a special sort of release piece. Uh, it originally came out in the uh, BB00, uh, what was it called? Uh, Brave, not Brave, Dynamite, sorry, Dynamite Perseus, uh, which had a similar color design to this, but of course now it changed from Dynamite to Savior, a recolor Savior. And Perseus is kind of interesting because obviously it's Perseus, special edition part, and uh, it also has metal on it, so that's pretty nice, it's pretty heavy. And the parts on it aren't all that great, as all you get with this one is Giga, and you get uh, Bearing Dash, so that's pretty okay. But anyway, let's get some more product shots of them there, which does look quite nice. Of course, let's get some more cool product shots there. Of course, emphasizing that, hey, this is the reason you're getting this set. <laughs> it's for Dangerous Belial. And for some reason, with this particular offer on Amazon, they're also offering the Z Achilles Saint Sword version that I already have. But hey, you know what? I might as well get an extra copyright because the, because the paint on my current version of this release... Um, part is getting a bit chipped, so hey, I can always use a backup, and plus Z Achilles layers do have a tendency to break after a period of time, so it would be good to always have a backup of that, but there you go, so that's that set for you, and I believe, is that everything for that? Uh, let's see, anything else here? Oh yeah, here's another one I definitely want to get, for sure. Uh, is this release. This is the Astral Spriggan release. Um, again, $60 for this thing. Good lordy. Um, so the whole gimmick of Astral Spriggan is that just like any of the other Spriggans in the Spriggan line, it has, or at least in terms of like World Spriggan and whatnot, as I believe this thing has burst locks on it, it has metal, it has rubber, it has the left and right spin modes. You guys can see it does have the C. There's the left spin mode, which is based on Spriggan and Requiem, and the right spin mode, which is based off a of World Spriggan sort of design, and as you guys can see, there are little sneak peeks of metal in this design, which is quite nice, and as I said, it does come in a set, you do get some other bays in here, you get, uh, you get some spare parts in here, you also get uh, this, what is this, this is Cyclone Belial, this is Belial 1, uh, or the first Belial design, so that's kind of nice. I do quite like that. And here's a closer look at that Cyclone Belial. do quite like the colors on it. 
And of course, of course, we get do get some stuff in here. We get some spare parts, um, and we also get the combo for uh, Astral Spriggan, which is um, over the disc, and then Quattro. And Quattro is quite interesting as it has four metal tips it can change between. So you, so I think that's pretty interesting. And over is actually a pretty good disc as it's like it's similar to like Zero Zero and uh, the Two B chassis that we got with um, World Spriggan, but um, well, actually, it's more al aligned to the Zero Zero disc, but from what I've heard, it's pretty good. So definitely looking forward to this release for sure. And, um, well, to get this release for sure, just for, just, just for Spriggan mostly. But, of course, Cyclone Belly is also quite nice. You know, just to get another version of Cyclone. But, um, that's really about it for that. And also you do get the um, Spriggan uh, gear, or S gear, for Belial, Dynamite Belial, so that's pretty cool. And uh, anything else I wanted to mention here? Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, uh, something else. I uh, just moving on to some more sort of die my battle stuff. I definitely want to get me uh, Savior Valkyrie, as this thing is really, really cool looking, as you guys can see. Really nice design with the sort of the sort of Valkyrie head right there and the rubber sort of blades on it. But the the main gimmick behind this release is the driver, which is called Shot. And essentially, what it does is it has a spring-loaded jumping gimmick that as you guys can kind of see at this screenshot when it during battle if it gets hit hard enough it will actually trigger a spring at the bottom as you guys can kind of see and make it jump into the air which I think is absolutely fantastic a really really cool just sort of outlandish gimmick for this bay and of course with this release you do get the V gear for Dynamite Belial in it which is quite nice that goes on its uh, venture driver but still very, very nice release right there. I do quite dig its design. And again, the gimmick of it jumping into the air is definitely unique, as I don't think we've ever seen that before on any other Beyblade release. And other than that, I think that's really about it. So let's actually move on to uh, Bakugan for a minute here, as there is a Bakugan set I definitely want to get, that being the Ultimate Villox set. Hold on. Let me just type it into the search bar. Ultimate Villock, there he is. For some reason, he's only on Amazon right now. He's not at Target, Walmart, anywhere. He's only on Amazon. So right now, I, I believe he's an Amazon exclusive. Again, he's 40 bucks, just like um, my uh, Geoforge Dragonoid that I did a review of back in August. But basically... This set is very similar in that sort of design, as we get uh, one core Bakugan, in this case we get Villoc, and then we also get some other components here in the form of Geogon. Which the Geogon we get with this one are Skyhorse, uh, Babadrill, Antfrog, Ghost Beast, Insectra, and Swarmer. So essentially, all of these components will combine together to form this monstrosity right here. And it is quite interesting, and you can kind of make out uh, who who goes where to make this thing happen. But, um, of course, with this, you, of course, get the figures, but you also get some cards. Obviously, you get some Beku cores, and you get an exclusive gate card. In this case, this is the Villoc 001 card, based on his uh, monster form in the cartoon. And, um, all in all, quite the interesting set, even if, of course, he does look a bit wonky. But then again, Geoforce Dragonoid also looked a bit wonky, and you guys can kind of see where all the figures go to form the combiner. But still, very, very interesting sets, and of course, very similar box sort of design right there, where you have the core Bakugan at the top, and then all the other guys sort of, sort of surrounding him, right? And then you have all the little energy bolts going in to form Ultimate Villoc. Very nice design there do quite like it so other than that uh, that's pretty much it for like my collectible stuff so let's move on to video games as there are a couple video games I want to get for Christmas as well uh, first up of course is uh, the original Metroid Prime as many people have been requesting for me to get the original Metroid Prime 
And of course, there's many, many reasons why I haven't gotten it yet. So hold on. Actually, let me go to eBay real quick. eBay is way better for this sort of stuff. Hold on. Let me go to eBay to look up Metroid Prime. And let me tell you, and right away, as, as the search results come up for Metroid Prime uh, from the GameCube era, you guys will see why I haven't gotten this game yet. Can you see why? Can you see? Can you see? $22, $60, $64. I believe I've even seen this game being priced at like over $100. Like, look at this guy over here! $1,700 for Metroid Prime, sealed. Good lord. You can see why I haven't gotten Prime yet. But essentially, Metroid Prime, one of the greatest um, Metroid Prime games in the, in the trilogy... Prime Trilogy that lasted from 2002 to 2007 with ending with Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. Really wouldn't want to play this game as I have heard nothing but praise for this for this particular entry in the series. And uh, after all, and and after all, Metroid Prime was the entry to sort of um, reinvigorate life into the Metroid series. As at the time, there wasn't a new game in the series since 1994 Super Metroid slash Metroid 3. So this was a really cool surprise to see this game come out. And I believe this game also came out alongside uh, Metroid Fusion as well. Which, I'm thinking about doing a playthrough of that either for my birthday or sometime later next year. Just sometime then. But, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But, of course, I still have Donkey Kong Tropical... Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze I still need to do videos for, which I'm not going to do more videos of those until probably sometime after Christmas, because after all, I do want to enjoy my holiday this year, instead of having to focus on Let's Plays and stuff, at least for a little bit. So, that's the original Metroid Prime, definitely want to get that. Something else I want to get as well is, of course, Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, also known as Dark Echoes in Japan. This was the second game in the series, came out in 2004. Uh, alongside Metroid Zero Mission, a remake of the first Metroid game ever on the NES, and, um, well, Nintendo Entertainment System slash Famicom, but, um, yeah, this thing is quite the interesting game, as, uh, since I believe one of the main gimmicks of this game is that you can travel between two different dimensions, uh, Dark and Light Aether, and uh, obviously, this is a T-rated game because there is quite some. There is, this game gets quite dark for a Metroid game, but then again, Metroid as a series is pretty dark. And again, this guy, this guy's offering it for about as much as a brand new Switch game. Good lord, man! But yeah, and as you guys can see, tiny little disc. And and I and and you guys might be wondering, wait, Mike, you don't have a GameCube, do you? So how are you gonna play these games if you get them? Well, for those who don't know, the Wii, because I do own a Wii, is actually, and, and I actually have one of the original model Wiis, is backwards compatible with the GameCube. So I could actually play these games on there. All I need all I need is, of course, the games, and of course I need an original GameCube controller that plugs into the top of the unit. But after that, then I am good to go. So, there you have that. So that's really about it. Now, is there any sort of final things I want to add here? Because I think I'm forgetting something. Uh, you know what? Let's look at Switch games. Let's look at Switch games. So let's go back to Target again. Target. Just because why not, right? Uh, let's look up some Switch games. Because I know there's some Switch games I definitely want to get on, um, on my console. One of, one of which, of course, let me see if I can find it, is Animal Crossing New Horizons, as many people have been asking me to play New Horizons. And I've heard, I've listened, I've been listening. Um, I definitely will get it. I don't know if I'm going to play it on the channel. More than likely, I will. Uh, there it is right there. It's a, I'm pretty sure it's a digital version. But I uh, definitely do want to get that. I've never played Animal Crossing before. I'm really interested in it, as I have played Stardew Valley. Um, on Switch and on PS4. Unfortunately, it didn't get too popular, and I actually got bored of it at the time of when I started playing it, so I kind of stopped until I recently got it uh, on the Switch, uh, my first Switch anyway, uh, not my new OLED model that I have, but 
Um, yeah, definitely want to get him across the New Horizons. Not only to shut some of you up out there, <laughs> no offense, but um, but also to finally give Animal Crossing a chance. Who knows? Maybe I might really enjoy it. That, or maybe I won't really like it. Who knows? More than likely, I'm probably going to enjoy it. It's Nintendo. I'm going to enjoy it either way. So I'll find something to enjoy in it. So anything else for Switch I kind of want to get? Uh, let's see. Um... I think that's really about it um, for Switch games. Oh yeah, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. Definitely want to get those, as I've heard, as I've heard really good reviews about Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. So hold on, let me br let me bring those up. Hold on. So Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. These are remakes of the original Nintendo DS entries, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Definitely want to get these, as I've only played the third game in the series uh, that came out for Gen 4, which I believe was 2006, 2007. Those these games came out originally. Uh, there was Pokemon Platinum, which essentially combined the elements of Diamond and Pearl, plus it added some new content to the pre-existing game. So, unfortunately, of course, nowadays Nintendo doesn't do two Pokemon versions like they used to, so now they only do two entries per generation, so, um, and for remakes. But, of course, there also was a third game that goes along with these, Pokemon Legends Arceus, that I believe is coming out relatively early next year. I have that on my wish list on my Switch uh, eShop. But definitely want to pick that up, as that's quite an interesting one. So, along with these games. But, of course, as I said, $60 for Pokemon! Good God! And these games have a lot of content in them, too, which, oh, man, cannot wait to get these. And anything else I want to get? Hold on. Let us let me go to Nintendo. Hold on. Let me go to the Nintendo website. Let me go to the eShop. Hold on. Because I know I have some games on my wish list. Hold up. Let's go to my wish list real quick. Hold up. Let me close these other tabs. Just so I'm not using up data over here. So let's see if the wish list will come up. So there are some games I definitely want to get. Obviously, as you can kind of see here, I have some games from uh, the recent uh, December Indie World uh, that came out. Was it not even two days ago? I uh, definitely want to get Parkosaurus, Chicory, A Colorful Tale. I know that came out on PS4, PS5 originally as a as a Sony indie game or PlayStation indie title. I forget what they I forget how they titled it, but definitely want to get it as it does look quite charming. Of course, Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. I've heard really good reviews about it. And I've been very interested in it, as it's a very nice retro sort of throwback type of game. And, of course, um, ever since I watched Game Grumps' videos about it, I've really wanted to play Shovel Knight. So, uh, wish me luck in trying to get this. Hopefully, maybe I get some eShop credit, or maybe I just get the game on physical, because I'm pretty sure it has a physical release as well. So, definitely want to see if I can get this one. It's only like 40 bucks, so that's not too bad for, for what this has. And, of course, there's a ton of DLC for this game, too. So definitely want to play that one. Of course, we do have some other sort of one-off games in here as well. Subnautica, it's a Nautica Below Zero. Definitely want to get this bundle. Um, Sixty dollars for this, just like any other Switch title these days. But as you guys already know, I love these two games. Uh, I know that I'm overdue for another episode of Subnautica Below Zero because uh, I really wanted to finish that game, but of course my PS4 went kaput on me, so can't exactly finish my Below Zero now, can I? <laughs> so, um, and I don't think you can transfer data between consoles either, which sucks. But anyway, definitely want to get this game for the Switch, as of course, I've loved the original Sonatica. I really want to play Below Zero, because I might continue that um, on, uh, of course, Switch and on the channel uh, through that. So this could be another means to finally finish Below Zero, let alone, you know, play it some more. Um, as, of course, like I said, PS4 went kaput on me, so this is what I have to work with, but is the Switch. But, yeah, definitely want to get this game, for sure. Let alone the bundle, as uh, I know they were in... Did, I know, I believe, in March of this year, they were released individually, but it's nice that now they have this double-pack release of it, so that's really cool.
Of course, you can also see some one-off games in here. Uh, Tetris Effect in here. Castlevania. Kind of want to give that series a try since uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure Castlevania um, and Metroid are sort of similar in their sort of designs. So definitely want to give Castlevania a go for sure. Castle Crashers, definitely want to get that. That's a really old uh, PC game that finally got ported to the Switch. So thank God that that exists. Uh, anything else here of note that I want to add here? Um, let's see. As you guys can see, some more one-off sort of games in here. Uh, oh yeah, Advanced Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. I believe these are, I believe this is a soft reboot of a Game Boy Advance series um, that, that was really popular on the Game Boy Advance. I believe this was a strategy game or something like that, where you like arm your troops, right, and you go to battle with other players, right, and, and that sort of stuff. Definitely want to get into this series, as I've heard really good things about the original Advanced Wars on Game Boy Advance. Um... So, definitely want to see if I can get these games and play them, for sure. As those look quite interesting. Of course, there we have Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, of course. Already, already said why I want those. And there's, there's some other little one-off games in here, like Dead Cells. I know this is very much inspired by Metroid, so definitely want to give this series a go. Super Liminal, I've seen Markiplier's playthrough on that. Looks very interesting with the sort of uh, mechanic of that, of that particular indie game. Uh, of course, we have some more indie games like Aztec. Uh, let's see. TMNT. Kind of want to give that a go because that does look interesting. Some more sort of one-off indie games. I also have Xenoblade and Link's Awakening in here because why not? I'm not a big Legend of Zelda or Xenoblade fan, but might as well give them a go, right? See if they're any good. Uh, Doom, Ghost and Goblins, uh, New Pokemon Snap, some more one-off games. Uh, Hollow Knight Silk Song. I have played the original Hollow Knight a little bit on PS4. Definitely want to see uh, what this new game has in store. And of course, I want to get the original on my Switch because, again, PS4 went dead. So, can't exactly play it anymore on my PS4 like I would like to. But um, and, the, and both of those games are also inspired by Metroid. Not predictable of me. But Mega Man 11 is also on here. Uh, some more indie games. See, there's the original Sonatica. It's not below zero right there. Elder Scrolls, New Super Mario Brothers, Spelunky. All kinds of stuff on here that I want to get on this console. More indie games. Uh, let's see. Anything else of note to add here. Oh yeah, I also wanted to try Fire Emblem, the Shadow Dragon and Blade of Light. Uh, definitely want to give that a go at some point. It's only like five bucks, but you know, I haven't gotten any shop credit in a while, so I cross my fingers I get some. Uh, here are some other games I also wanted to get, of course. Uh, Pikmin 3, Super Mario Maker 2. Um, I, I, since I do have the original Mario Maker on 3DS, yes, I know, I'm a sucker. I bought the worst version of Mario Maker. But I definitely wanted to get Mario Maker 2 for the Switch. I actually bought my mic there. Because uh, it would be really cool if you guys were to make me some levels on there. So that way I could rage and flip out and lose my mind. Because I know that's why people watch let playthroughs of this game. Is to watch people rage and lose their minds. So, And of course, uh, some of you out there have no know, know what my rage is like. <clears throat> Evan. But uh, my gamer rage. So I bet you guys would probably love to see me rage, lose my mind, just throw my controllers across the room. You know, all that fun stuff. So, Because I know there's some of you out there that love just watching me rage, so uh, some of my rage videos would, um, or videos where I rage have, you know, sort of told me. But, uh, and I guess some last little things, of course, is Splatoon 2. Definitely want to get that. Um, since I know, um, shout out to my, um, moderator, uh, my moderator, Abby, sorry, almost called you, <laughs> almost called you, uh, something else, <laughs> no, I don't know what I was trying to say, I was trying to say Abby and admin at the same time, I was gonna call you, like, Abby demand or something like that, I don't know what I was doing, but anyway, <laughs> small brain moment, so, Abby, sorry, uh, I know you've been wanting me to get Splatoon, I know you've been asking me for some time now to get Splatoon to, and I def and I've heard, I've heard, I'm definitely working on it, I'm trying to get this game as well, and I definitely will be getting Splatoon 3 as well when that drops, um, as well, because why not, dare I say, why not, nice to see a Wii U, um, uh, new IP for that console, 
come over to the Switch system. But yeah, I think that's actually going to wrap it up for this video. So let me actually close the tab, get back to my sort of background. So with that being said, that's going to wrap it up for this rather interesting Christmas special, guys. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and ring that notification bell so that way you guys get notified for all my uploads. Later, Reed Squad, and have a happy holiday.